Hey up guys, it's Rory from In Light the Shadows here and we are a men's mental health group that is out there to support and make a difference. Our heart in Light the Shadows is to create media mindfulness mentoring in a way we can really impact men's lives so that we can see them transform and utterly be supported and poured out love upon their lives. Uh, so it's, even if men are just struggling with a bit of stress and anxiety or across the spectrum, all the way to if they're, they feel like they just want to end their life or be suicidal. So if that's you, if you feel like you, you have no reason to live anymore or you just need a little bit of support, if you need some guidance about how to bet your life, some of your mindsets and your strategies, uh, we'll be honoured to have you on the journey with us. Um, and you would say, welcome to the Brotherhood. Um, we don't claim to have all the answers, but we are just here for you, extending that olive branch to see you flourish in your life. And we just say, have a go, give it a go. You never know what could happen. Um, have a great day. Cheers, guys. Hey up everyone, welcome to Enlighten the Shadows. Today is episode 42. We have got Enzo Macronelli, uh, former Cruiserweight world champion, joining us uh, for this show. I'm buzzing. I'm grateful for him um, going into our DMs uh, and making this happen. Uh, yeah, just absolutely delighted for this one. Um, we spoke to him a few months back and then it's, it, things happen for a reason. He put a beautiful post out uh, last week, which we'll talk about more guys, but yeah. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. Uh, we're not interested in numbers to look popular. We just want to reach as many blokes possible with their mental health. And if this episode uh, can change one bloke's life and, and keep them on this planet, then that would that be um, what we're aiming for. So yeah, Enzo, mate, welcome to Enlighten the Shadows. Uh, thank you, mate. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, sound. Um, I was going to say, before we get going, mate, a couple of things that I want to uh, kind of Thing that we might have in common first is I saw your tweet about Rodrigo. Are you a dirty Leeds fan? No, I definitely not. <laughs> it's not having it. <laughs> no, so, 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 so I've been training every Bridges, uh, and I got to know every. She's a massive Leeds fan. Uh, a couple of a couple of her followers started following me, and I interact with them as well. So I thought I thought I'd watch the game, but it, it was no, it was no wanting anyone to win. It was basically just. I would have missed that call. I would have been taking my sash. Oh, it. mate. I'm thanking for it. I was, so I was in the ground that night because I'm actually a dirty Leeds fan. So right. um, I hope we don't fall out. But yeah, man. Um, football. We, we, we won't fall out. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a Swansea City boy. Uh, I'm for yeah. every fight in Leeds. I had to wear Leeds colour tracksuit. So, you know, it was. Uh, <laughs> I saw that, brother. I actually remember some of her club is quite nice, actually. Uh, yeah. Ebony's yeah, got, she's on she's it. A massive, she's a massive Leeds fan. She's got a good, uh, she got a good sponsor. I think it does her clothes and stuff like that. She, she's, um, she's one of them. It's got to get everything right. Uh, down to a fight kit. I, I was definitely when I was younger, I just didn't give a shit. I was just, <laughs> give me a pair of black shorts, black, black boots. I couldn't care what talk, I didn't care what music I had. Uh, until until I started listening to Tom Petty, One Back Down. Uh, the song One Back Down, standing in front of, front of the gates of hell. Uh, and I went back down and that, you know, that stood me in good yeah. stead. But Evan likes everything done perfectly. She's one of them. She needs everything done right. Yeah, uh, in fairness, she does. She gets it done. Yeah, man, you just come for a scrap. That's all in it, pal. <laughs> I, I just didn't care after that. When I when I first started coming into things, I used to come to the arenas. You say, "Oh, one music got tonight, Dems." I say, "Stick with one done." I, I just didn't care. I was just there to fight. Uh, yeah. I come in there, come into some dodgy techno tracks. I come into um, what else? Come wild thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> with twenty two, but. I, you know, I, I, I've had a bit of Prodigy, I've had a bit of ACDC, yeah, but yeah. I found I found Tom Petty won't back down. I listened to the words, um, yeah. and it, you know, it's, it's a big. If you listen to the words, it sort of um, coincides with mental health as well. I don't even know the song, but the words sort of coincide. It's just uh, how tough things can be, and you know, yeah. you just won't, you just won't let won't let the world drag you down. Uh, and he won back down basically. So you know yes, that right. was something that not so much for the mental health. Just it was just my 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 way of thinking in life, my way of thinking in boxing. It was just just it wouldn't get me to quit. It wouldn't nothing could make me give in. Uh, yeah, and right. you know I just, I just love that song. But you know some people change all the time. And for me, 
I just love that song. No, I'm feeling it. Thanks, um, thanks for sharing that, man. Um, I was going to ask you about this at some point in this chat about how boxing itself, because actually boxing is like my number two, along with rugby. I, I freaking, I'm well into my boxing a lot. Um, mm. Got to a lot of fights. Unfortunately, I, I was at uni when you was like at your prime and world champion and then European titles as well. But um, yeah, I, I was thinking about how how mental health is, is as, as an aspect of life and boxing. And it's kind of like an oxymoron because, you, you know, obviously I, I have a clue. Like you go into war, boxing, and like to be brave and, and, and to always like man up and, and push through and be, you know, put away your fears and just push through. Like, would you say it's like similar with, with mental health or would you say like we need to slightly adapt it? What, what's your views on that? We, 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 we have obviously got to adapt it, but people, people need to uh, learn how to take people. So I know, I know some people uh, that I've heard say, oh, man, uh, you know, it just, it just sounds wrong. It just sounds uh, disrespectful. Um, but then I do my videos, my running videos and stuff like that. And I'm telling people, don't be a pussy. Um, sort of man up and so to speak dog your pussy get on with it have that spoon full of cement harden the fuck up uh, and get out and get some trainer and you know I had, a, I had a couple of private DMs telling me it's wrong what I'm saying and stuff like that but 99.9% .9 of my followers knew which way I meant they enjoyed the way I come across uh, they, they, I, I did say that I do it for no other reason I don't want messages but I was having all these DMs and people thanking me and I, I gotta be honest. Some of them moved me. Uh, I don't get moved much, uh, but some not, did. Not unless uh, you get not unless you get thumped on canvas. <laughs> no, not, not even that. It was just it just it's just a sort of uh, I live my life the way I live my life. And, yeah, man. You know, I, I can I can I can watch stuff. It's supposed to make you cry and things like that, and don't bother me in a slight dust. And you know, I, I'm very hard to move. But some of these messages I receive, or people have never been over their house, I'm being in a house, house of years. Uh, but they were out running, they tell me I'd take my spoonful of cement, I'm adding the fuck up, I'm out and running. You know, it, it was great. And like I said, I had, I had a couple of dodgy messages. Then, then we had um, a couple of guys where, you know, I'm disabled, I'm in a wheelchair, who tell me don't be a pussy, but I can't. So I, I put him in touch with Kieran Burns, who's uh, from a disability podcast. Oh, and right. I, said, uh, I put him, I sort of tag him in. And he comes in there and he said, well, I'm in a wheelchair, I can't walk. He said, well, I still train every day. I still do what I can. So stop being a fussy and get on with it. So it was, it was good. Oh, it's a very fine line, I think. It, it really is. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you explained that a lot. And it's like, you don't have to explain yourself, but it's quality because to see in your heart behind it. Because I think in life, there is a sense of aspect of mental health. I've, I was having this very chat at dinner um, last weekend in Nottingham. That's where I, I am. And saying how... It, in, in the last five, 10 years, I think we're going the right way about supporting people and um, especially men with their mental health and, and making it okay to, you know, to be vulnerable. But mm. I think if we go sometimes too far um, playing into your feelings in the sense that we make it our identity to be mm. depressed, we make it our identity mm. to, to be anxious, to be fearful. And I think we've got something to learn from like people like yourself and that where you're putting your body kind of like through through hell in a way to, to to press and get those um overload principles in your body so you can be resilient so you can um kind of skill up and i feel like in mental health that's really important for us fellas to um not get like you said it brilliantly not get offended by things and yeah i, I feel like i see that sometimes and i'm like yeah it's a tricky one i think, I think the problem with mental health at the moment is which is wrong it's 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 sort of like the new bad back, uh, some people just use it, um, and it takes away from the people who actually are suffering. Because um, you know, I saw you say, you know, mental health, and, and you know, you're gonna have two weeks off work, you can uh, get out of school work, you can just just by saying little things, and it, it sort of takes away from the people who are actually struggling. You know, I I I struggle myself sometimes. I wouldn't say I'm depressed. I didn't. I wouldn't say that I suffer badly, but I do get down now and again. Uh, you know, I've had a lot, of, couple of things happen to me lately, uh, which has sort of um, put me in a downer. Uh, I, like I said, I, I wouldn't say I was depressed. I've been upset over things, and you know, I, I, I spoke to someone. I, I got some one person I actually speak to, which is rare for me because um, yeah. I don't talk to anyone. I never have. I've dealt with things myself, but 
I have found someone that if I need to, very rare, but if I need to, I can. Um, yeah. and, and like I said, it's sort of, it, it sort of takes away from the actual people who do suffer. Uh, and like I said, I, I suffer a little bit, but I wouldn't say I'd suffer with depression. I wouldn't say I suffer with extreme anxiety. I do get anxiety sometimes. And, you know, I, I've been involved in a sport where anxiety can put you through the roof. Uh, when, you, when you're a young kid, you fight on these shows, you got to sell tickets to go on the show. Now we've got these tickets on the show. Uh, you've asked the promoter for 500 tickets. He phones you two weeks before the fight. Uh, how many tickets have you got left? Yeah, I sold them all. All the boys have come in. I went 10 year, and 20 year. Week of the fight, then they phone him up. Oh, I only won five, I won three. So you've got the anxiety end of going back to the promoter uh, and saying, oh, you know them 500 I said I sold? I only actually sold 200. So then you're looking at 10 grand, 10 grand down. Uh, so you're going to tell the promoter you've lost 10 grand. Um, so anxiety for me uh, is being involved, is involved in sport massively. And, you know, I see some, and this is not to have a go at anyone, but, you know, I see some people pulling out the tournaments, pulling out the things because of anxiety. But for me, anxiety in sport is I'll always be there. It's always been there. Yeah. And it, it always will be there. And if you can't control your anxiety, unfortunately, that that in general is in sport. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think I, I played at um, Nottingham Forest as a kid and I was out in America on a scholarship for, for football, soccer, as they call it out there, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I'd, I remember like those times where you get proper butterflies and you're dead anxious because obviously you want to you want to perform optimum level and you, you know what it what it's going to have to take yeah. and you want to go to the next level even then you want it so bad and then you f- you're feeling like oh shoot am i at my level here i'm out my depth and yeah you feel it so much that pressure I, I call it pressure and i think some people just naturally like deal with it really well and then some people as you know like they, they crumble under the pressure um so yeah there's a lot to learn like, that's what i love about sport you can learn so much about yourself um, as well as people around you, for sure, man. But appreciate you opening up like that, mate. Um, takes a lot. Big time. Yeah, but I, I'm not ashamed of it. You know, I'm a, I, I like to think I, I can fight with the best of them. I'm not scared of no one, never been scared of anyone. The only person I've ever put fear in me is my dad. Never, never hit me or nothing like that, but I just had the luck. And when I had the luck, I knew, who oh, be careful, shot. But, you know, I, I'm scared of no one. I don't care what people think. Um, exactly. And, you know, I think it's... It's nice when people see me and they see what I can do and stuff like that. And, you know, I say I suffer. Um, but I'm a coach as well. I coach an amateur gym and the amount of kids are in there who suffer, as you as you pointed to the tweet I done earlier, um, I think that was a bit, a bit more than uh, what, I'm, what we were going to do. Uh, but, you know, the amount of kids, especially during the lockdown, they were phoning me. I had to give them a, I had to give them a little rotor for the gym to have a key for an hour so they could jog to the gym so they want to have a drive. And jog to the gym, have an hour in the gym, bring the key back or leave the key back for the next one to go in, make sure they Amazing. sterilize everything. So just just to keep them off, because we had one kid, um, he's, a, he's an ex addict, uh, and he, he's come to us, he fights, and he's good, and he'd been clean for four or five years. Uh, during this lockdown, I had a phone call, I had to pick him up down the Mumbles, which is down the seafront, um, no shoes on, no top on, with cocaine up his nose. Yep. So, you know, just his mental side of things just went. Uh, he's back on it now. He's back in. Uh, he went back to, to his rehab or wherever he goes. And he's been clean now since the last lockdown. So, wow. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just affected loads of people's mental health. It has, mate. And that, that's, I don't know if you checked this out. Well, that's, that's how we were birthed. Um, mm. I, I lost my baby. Um, we've both been told. You, you saw my wife just earlier before I come on mm. camera. We've both been told we can't have children. And, We've been waiting four years and um, miraculously we conceived and we lost the baby. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah man, no, thank you. And um, then my stepsister took her own life three days later. Yeah. So I was supporting my wife and then my dad as well. And it was it was just crazy, man. And um, I was in a really dark place. And that's where where you said rightfully, um, when people say, over the, oh, I'm, I'm depressed. And it's like, no, you're just sad or you, you, you're in a rut, mm. like you were saying. And... But when you've got like multiple grief and real mm. significant traumas like that, yeah, mate, I was in a bad place. And then I, I had I to do something about it, brother, because I was like, we, we all feed our time and our focus on stuff. Like you're, you said that, you know, that lad that you look out for, the, bo- the boxing is him. It's either boxing or sadly, 
mm. it'll, it'll just delve back to the cocaine and mm. yeah mate so i had to do something about it and that's why i just did these videos and then Brilliant. now we support like 560 odd men um on our group which Brilliant. is freaking mad I, I, do you know what i mean like i just thought yeah i'll do a few videos and see how it goes and then now it's like grown because like there's a need there isn't there like blokes need an outlet and i think, I think that was the reason when i, I done these videos so i done them through lockdown when i was uh training in the garage and stuff like that i done the one uh and then i done the two and it was like don't be a pussy and i started i started i ran up i ran up a hill by the gym it's the hill is like two miles uh and i said i hadn't done it for ages i sprinted up there and it's literally like that so i got to the top uh i thought to myself ends and i said i said <laughs> i said at the end moral of the story is don't be a pussy get out get some fucking work done uh, make, make yourself feel better and I only done it once as a, as a bit of a novel, a bit of a niggle uh, and like I said, the amount of messages I had I ended up doing one every single day of lockdown from the class. entire lockdown I'd done a video every single day um, so it was uh, it was good, it was, it was rewarding, uh, you know I was having a bit of a laugh at some of the stuff I was, I was coming up with, people there uh, making videos of Tending to be me with the Welsh accent out running and stuff like that, and it was good. It was just a, it was a good, good giggle, and we had a good laugh. Um, but you know, I think I helped a lot of people. Like, I'm still having messages now because people know I was in hospital, and you know, they they sending me messages saying, "Oh, you know, you saved so many, you saved me." Uh, I must have had about two hundred messages when I've been in hospital, just saying, "Oh, I saved them." Uh, if I need any help, they can talk to them. And like I said, I'm I'm not one to talk, but. Uh, it, it was appreciated. Yeah, man, definitely. It's class of you. Um, do you know, so at the local boxing gym, is that where, um, do you know the tweet you put out with Will? Um, right. w w was Will affiliated with that club? Or was that well, Yeah, Will, Will's my boy. Will, Will's my, 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 my dad had that gym. I took it over when he passed away. My brother passed away as well last two years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm sole in charge. I've just been awesome as well. But Will... It, it was it was mad that we worked with Will when he was ten. He's from a good family. He's from a wealthy family. But they're a good family as well. Um, and he he wrote the letter at the age of ten uh, to Mister McCarronelli, my father. Uh, I'm Will Hughes, good little rugby player. Uh, I'd love to join the gym. I'd love to. We still got the letter now. We'd like to join the gym. So we come to the gym, and it was it was funny because we have um we had a lot of gypsy boys there. Uh, yeah. well, we've always had we've always had them there's some of the nicest kids you'll ever meet we had um, up there and it was funny because Will come out all smartly dressed head to toe matching the Adidas and you know, he, okay. he from, not a posh family well, well off family the family works hard um, yeah. and his father his father come to pick him up um, one summer uh, I think it was about three weeks in uh, from him joining us and he was outside playing football because the, the kids' class had finished, they were out in the grass playing football with a gypsy kid. He had a vest on and a crucifix on. He looked like another gypsy boy. So it, it was just funny. And he come, he went on, he, he won Welsh titles, he won British titles, um, he went all the way up to senior. Um, he went to do a uh, he went to do business studies in uni in London. Yeah, um, he didn't want to go because he went to the Karen's boxing, but I got him into the Repton Boxing Club. I said, Look, I got a kid, he's very good. They said, Oh, we see how good he is. He phoned me after, he said, Oh, he's fucking good, he is. I said, Told him, uh, he passed his business studies. Um, he said, He went on holiday with the boys. Um, he sent us a video on one on a two a Sunday, I think it was. He was on a, he was on a boat party, some. Some girl giving him a lap dance, nineteen year old, nineteen year old boy. Uh, not not a full lap dance, just just in a bikini and stuff like that. Yeah, just sent a tease. Boy, yeah, <laughs> sent, sent, sent on a boy WhatsApp group. Um, we were laughing. That's the way to go, well, and all that. Um, and the next day I was in the garage. I was in the gym, and uh, I had about six missed calls of a number I didn't know, and I didn't know, and I wouldn't answer. Uh, if I don't know, I won't answer. And then uh, someone phoned me. My brother phoned me. And he said, he told me what happened. He hung himself um, just out on a holiday with the boys. Um, and this is a kid. This is a kid. He was, my, he was more than my, my student. He was like my little brother. He literally, he literally told me everything. He told me his first time with a girl. I remember being in the house and 
from 12 o'clock. He said, I won't go into too much detail. He said, I done it then, I done it. I swear to done by. He said, I done it. So my wife's gone like, who's that? I said, oh, it's Will. Uh, tell me what, uh, what I believe I'm going to go. He can't tell you that. I said, well, he can't tell his father, can he? So I said, that's something I thought. Yeah. I, said, I literally talked to him about everything. Um, you know, he, he come to me forever. But it was obviously something he couldn't mm. quite tell me. And, and then later on, I found out he's on anti depressants and um, things like that. And I just, you know, I have, I have my ideas why I have my ideas. Um, the, the reason that I won't go into too much detail. I even asked, I even asked his friends because in the, in the boxing world and, you know, this day and age, I said, was he gay or, and then you know, I just asked the boys, and you know, the boys know what I'm like. I couldn't give a toss either yeah. way, so I, I didn't expect that because I think he would have come and told me. Um, but he, they just said no, and he said the girls love them, he loved the girls, and so I got I got my reasoning, I got my ideas why I think it yeah. could be something, but I won't I won't go into too no, much of that. Course. Obviously, me and him, like no, no, absolutely, mate. It's the shared more, more than it's you just, it's just wrecked me and. Uh, we went to the funeral, and mm. uh, like I said, I, I don't get emotional at all. I don't. Uh, I, I, I was a I was a bearer at my dad's funeral. I didn't shed a tear, uh, nothing at all. And I was at Will's funeral, and I was okay. I was, you know, I was just I was sort of blank, uh, but I was okay. Yeah. And then his father, his father read a letter out, and the letter, and the letter was how much he loved Enzo. Oh, I was gone. I was just absolutely gone. Was yeah. like by. My little protege, my little brother, gone. Hmm. Yeah, man. It's mad, isn't it? And it's like so subtle. And that's what we said earlier. This is why it's so important to men to realise that not to invalidate your, your feelings either and say, oh, someone else got it worse. Because like your people go, oh, I'm, I'm suicidal and that. And we have to be very careful. We don't gaslight people and, and say, oh, I don't believe you. Um, but there's people that sometimes play on it like we, we said overly and then there's people like Will so, someone like me that was struggling like for months and quietly on, on the slide and I wouldn't want to admit ever I was suicidal to no one and I didn't want to freak people out mm. um, but it's such a reality and then you just feel like oh shoot I can't I don't think I can share this but actually by offloading and releasing it it, it, help, it helps so much more but I think um, one of my one of my heroes going out is Gary Speed and um, I saw a beautiful video uh, with yeah. Leeds, Leeds and Welsh legend. Yes, mate. Honestly, full art class, and and everyone spoke so highly of him. And Dan Walker did a beautiful video. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, no. Oh, mate, it's classic. Try and check it out. Dan Walker. Um, he was working at BBC. Do you know, like the football scores come in at yeah. uh, five o'clock. So he worked with with Gary Speed and. Like Gary's like talking off the off camera to the cameraman loads, and they went to Harpenden High School and like chatting like on a level. And um, Dan was saying that mate, there was no sign whatsoever that Gary was like in that place, or you know he said something or come across. But later that night is when Gary sadly took his own life and also hung himself. And you're just like flipping it, man. It's just it's like that's why that's why we call it in light in the shadows. Um, men men are in the shadows, struggling in darkness, and you just need to light them up and say, look, it, it, it's cool that you feel this way. Like We're, we're, we're going to get through it together. And so I think it's just a lot of shame as well, you know, coming across weak. And mm -hmm. I don't know what you think with that, obviously coming from your background. And like, I, I think your childhood was pretty like full on from what I, I, I've read with your dad and, you know, being 15 and fighting like. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was my, 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 you know, my, my childhood. Um, it was sort of boxing, 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 but it was like, um, you know, my, my dad was good to me. Um, you know, I had um, tons of friends, I had loads of friends in school. Um, I used to have a 15 year old stuff, boys do have a park on a Friday night, bottle of white cider, uh, there's many, get neck as many girls as you can, and all that rubbish. Um, but it was like, I, I had a good childhood, um, and I think uh, the later on I'd gone on life, uh, you know, certain things start happening and things like that. So you, you struggle a little bit more and you get you get a little bit down. And um, and I, I'm probably one of them selfless people. I, I'd rather uh, I'd rather put a smile on someone else's face than I would myself, yeah. um, than my own self. And I've I've always been like that. And you know, people told me I've got to put yourself first sometimes. And 
Uh, I just I just can't to be honest. Yeah. Times, but you know, but since since what happened with Will, um, whenever I'm up the gym, there's a couple of kids up there who I know. Uh, once a month, I make it plainly clear to them, boys, any problems, anything you want to talk about, sexuality, money, family. I said you can all come to me. I said they're never going no further. You know, just just so they know they got someone to talk That's to class. and. Um, you know, it's such a it's such a big thing at the moment, and you know, you, you, you'd like to think that uh, you would be there for someone. Um, you know, I I told someone on Twitter not so long ago, like, we need someone to talk to. Just drop me a DM, and you know, I think people know with me, I generally would talk to someone, and you know, I I've had a couple just out of the blue, and it's probably over my head. So you know, I've had a chat with them, and you know, I've I've said you know, we need to speak to a specialist. You speak to someone uh, who's going to give you the priority. You know, I, I don't yeah. really want to tell you too much because I could be telling you totally wrong. You know, might not take it right, uh, but I will try. Like, yeah, definitely, mate. I, I think that's really important. Like, you got to know like your level with it too, because yeah, like yeah. it's life and death here. It's quite serious, and you don't want to get like um, savior complex and be like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I've got this. And we're we're just an entry level um, support group mental health service like we're not specialists um so we, we we have to be careful with that when we get mm. stuff that's quite high priority we like have to signpost other services and that what um do you know with with will like now gone what do you think like n- like now since like his legacy has been left there what what would you say you've learned most about kind of this area of life for your, your, yourself and what that looks like for you because like obviously something so important can impact you it's, in a powerful way and like it could take time to like learn revelation or anything but yeah is there anything positive that you kind of the, the only the only positive the only positive i can take out of it is the fact that i'm letting people know that i'm there for them so if i can save someone else uh you know if i if i'd have known about will i would have i would have flown out to greece to get him if i'd have known anything i would have i would have literally pack my bags and oh i would have gone in whatever i was wearing I would have gone out to get him 100%. He was such a nice kid. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, that's the only positive I could see because, you know, it's, it's sort of, it did hit me for sex. It still hits me now. Uh, I don't know what's I was, I was really tearing up earlier when I was talking about him. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's just mad. Uh, a kid can be so happy one day. And this is the thing. This is the problem. The ones, uh, I'm not trying to, prioritise anyone but the ones who like you said just keep banging on in the press in the press in the press they're the ones sometimes who are, who are actually not yeah. they're actually not the ones who are actually the, the ones who are actually really depressed are the ones who are smiling the ones who are talking the ones who are having a laugh and you know look at Will send, sends us that video the day before go on Will boy you know we all chat for him and then he does that so yeah um don't get me wrong, people are in a downer and you can see they're in a downer and they are genuinely in a downer. But a lot of the time, they're talking uh, and like you said, they could be just in a rut. Um, the one, the what, what what I've seen and what i found out, the, I say 70% of people who actually take their own lives who, who are depressed are the ones you couldn't tell. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, and that, that, I think that's the worst thing about it. You know, yeah. I always... I always try to go on to uh, every now and again. I put something on Twitter about checking and checking new friends. Yeah. Um, you know, they you may think they're happy, they may not be, but just check, just ask them how they are and stuff like that. Well, that's quality, mate. Love it. Thank you for doing that. Like a lot, you know, you don't have to do it, and because of your background and what you've made of yourself in life, like naturally people of course they they look up to you and when you're when you're putting it like that it's it's massive the way, the way, the way I, I boxed for no other reason than i love to box uh that was it i love fighting i didn't care about the money i didn't care don't get me wrong the money was great uh, yeah. bought me a couple of houses i got money in the bank and but i never done it for money i never done it for fame uh i just wanted to be a world champion to make my dad proud uh and that was it for me so uh, I know a lot of people look up to me and I know a lot of people, especially on Twitter, they, they love some of the stuff I say. So, you know, I have a good following. So, you know, I'd like to just pull out there now and again, you know, it's okay not to be okay. That's right, mate. Uh, and that's why I don't mind telling people sometimes I'm in a bit of struggle and stuff like that. Like, um, 
you know, sometimes I've got quotes out and people think it's coming from me, but it's basically it's basically just quotes to uh, just just for people to read. You know, don't quit now. Is something good is only happening around the corner. Whether you've got an illness or then you know you've got to you've got to be as strong and as positive as you can. And I I probably sometimes I look at the glass half empty sometimes and yeah. you know what what I'm going through at the moment and uh, <laughs> I've had someone give me a bit of a, give me a bit of boost. You know, ends you know, I guess, man, man, but I know where they're coming from. I know which way be positive, think of the positives. You know, if you think positive, positive things will happen, so they say. But, uh, you know, I, I like, I like trying to be positive, I like people trying to be positive, and you know, like it's, it's a big stigma, and it, it always will be. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of like your declaration, what you say is your reality, like you know. You, I think it actually in the Bible it says, "As a man thinketh, so he is." So, like, you, you, whatever your belief system is and what you say over yourself, it actually becomes your reality. Um, mm. It's massive, man. Yeah, we've got to keep speaking positive things over ourselves and and each other, because like, especially on Twitter, of <laughs> all places, man, Twitter can be freaking feral sometimes. Yeah. It can be beautiful, so I, but yeah, yeah. I, I get a bit of shit now and again, but I can deal with it. Uh, I can deal with it. I'll, I'll, I'll um. Most most of the time someone gives me shit, I'll quote, retweet, put something funny on there. All my followers are bombarded. They will end up they end up blocking their account or <laughs> suspending their account. And I think if you can't give it, don't take it. But some of the shit I've seen given the boxes of um, excuse the language, but fucking troll accounts. Uh, just just you know, if someone puts a tweet out, a box puts a tweet out. Uh, you have about. 90% good tweets. You scroll down, you scroll down them tweets, it'll be, it'll be a couple of others. You know, I've, seen, I've seen people say, about well, we, we die of cancer, and, you know, just, just rat bags, like, just put, yeah. put people down. Um, it, it was a, it was a, it was an account the other day, um, a women's boxing account, and he, he's supposed to be there for women, and um, he's notorious for bullying and ganging up on girls. Uh, I've seen him do it with everybody, I've seen him do it with, um, uh, I've seen him do it with uh, Nkash Jonas, Manda Serrano, all, all top yeah. girl boxers. Just he has his favourites and he gives others shit. He won't give them no, uh, no um, sort of positive feedback. It's all down. And it's sort of bullying. Uh, so he, he had to go with me, I had to go with him. Some of my followers jumped on, uh, started calling him something, and he just blocked his account for everyone. And so, he, you know, he just, the amount, the amount of people, um, I've se- I've seen it's just ridiculous, like. big time. And I, a lot, I think you had, you actually tweeted about it recently, saying about a lot of these people they're just jealous. Mate, it's just I, jealousy. It's it's just bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. Um, I just I've just seen maybe maybe the girls, uh, but it's like uh, some of the things I've seen lately, and you know, it's come off people close to them as well and that's just jealousy and you know, why begrudge someone who's working hard get out get your ass off the set get your ass off the chair get stop yeah. fucking eating junk food get out because what, what it is a lot of people who are close to you not not everyone they're gonna be wrong not everyone but there's a lot of people who are close to you they don't they always pretend they're happy for you and so you start doing better than them once you start doing better than them once you start doing better than that, it. then you real, then they, then the green eyed monster comes out, the envy comes out. Uh, some someone who's worked, someone who's been there for ages, uh, I haven't had the fame, I haven't had the thing. They've done all right, they haven't had the fame. Someone comes in, takes promotes themselves well, takes takes some money, earns some big paydays, gets some fame, gets some notoriety, uh, and they, all the backstabbing just starts. It's unreal, isn't it? It's just like, it's almost like they want you to remain where you are and they can't handle it. If you, if, if you, if you upgrade yourself, it makes them uncomfortable. So then they have to almost like sabotage it. It's real strange stuff. Or they, or they can't actually praise you or inquisitively ask you questions that you can see sincerely. Like they're like, they, they give a crap. They're like, yeah, oh, I, I like them succeeding. And they're like, oh, how's it going? How, what's this? And there's none of that. It's just like, they don't even mention it. I find that they don't even want to talk about it whatsoever. And you're like, oh, okay. 
Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way the world is. Yeah. Yeah. Like well. I said, they pretend they're happy for him. Once you start doing better than them, then the envy comes in. And, Mad, uh, isn't it? Like, uh, and it really takes, and when you find stuff out like that, when you find out people are doing things like that, that takes a lot of mental strength to deal with it. Uh, you know, it's like, it's not for, Twitter's not for everyone. Um, no. It's it's like it's like um, <laughs> the the boy who tell you who went off uh, the rails. He was talking about going on Twitter because it took him a long time to get in the boxing WhatsApp group. So I wouldn't people thought I was a bit harsh because I wouldn't let him in, but then they started to realise why I wouldn't let him in because he couldn't take certain things. And because obviously, as you can imagine, a boxing WhatsApp group is brutal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no one means nothing by it. Uh, but it's all in there. You can all take a bit of banter. And some of the some of the things they call themselves, you've got to be really good friends to be able to call themselves that sort of thing. And for me, for me, that that breeds mental health. Mm. Uh, you know, I really think you come up my gym, you come up my gym. Oh, they call each other with a dog one left. But, <laughs> but you've got to realise right. how these boys are to be able to get away with what they say to each other with yeah. no animosity, no no comebacks and violence, stuff like that. Uh, I, I, we were at a boxing show once and two boys, my nephew and Tobias uh, and one of my other trainers, Mark. Oh, and they were brutal with each other. And, you know, people watching them thinking, oh my God, how's Enzo letting this go on? And I just said to them, I said, look, I said, you've got to realise how close they must be to say the stuff that they are to each other without getting upset. Mm-hmm. And for me, that, that be, breeds you as a man. It, bre- it breeds you... Uh, he said, my, my youngest boy, my youngest boy, he, he got diagnosed autistic when he was younger. Uh, you know, when I first heard that, he was like, oh, my God, the end of the world, and stuff like that. He's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. He gets the banter. He gets everything. He's 12 now. He started rugby. Uh, his banter is better than mine, and I got good banter. But he takes nothing <laughs> to heart. Uh, and for me, I, I sort of breed young men. It yeah. breeds young men. And as long as you know, it's no, no, no nastiness. If it was ever something nasty in my gym and one of the boys couldn't take it, it wouldn't happen. But mm. at the moment, they all love each other. Uh, they all get on with each other. And we, we, just, we just have a laugh. I have, I have a... I like this. I have a, I have a, a Pakistani boy up there, um, Hamza. Lovely kid. You know, he, he, he's a bit troubled sometimes as well, so I, I like to keep on top of him. And after a couple of weeks, uh, he turned up the gym late. So it was like a Saturday morning session. I said, how do you lit? And he said, oh, I've been praying. For one, I know he's not a practicing Muslim, right? I know 100% he's not a practicing Muslim, so it was just an excuse. So I said, I said, oh, you know, I said, oh, Hamza, I said, Allah won't help you in your boy. I said, in your I'm God, right? So he looked at me like that. He, he sort of looked like that. About two hours later, I have a phone call off his dad. And I thought, oh, here we go, isn't it? And his father went, I got to say, he said he absolutely loves it up there. He said he loves to be part of something. He loves the jokes. He loves the banter. But like, I knew he wouldn't take no offence for you. Yeah. If I, if I thought he did, I wouldn't say nothing. You build but up that, that relationship, aren't you? So yeah, that's the trust yeah. is there. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they were, they was, he went to a fight one night. Um, and we all, we all give him grief and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like after lockdown, he come back from lockdown. I said, look at the state, didn't he? I said, 10 kilos overweight. I said, what have you been eating? Curries. He said, that's racist. I said, what have you been eating then? He said, oh, curries. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's a lovely kid and we can give him grief and he, he, he gets it back. But he boxed one night. He boxed one night yeah. and it was a bit of racism from a crowd off the boys' yeah. the boys uh, thing. He, him and his family realised what my boys are about then. Because it was it was murder. We don't fight, you know, nothing like that. But it was murder. It, yeah. it, it was absolute murder. It, you know, he was one of us, and they couldn't believe it. The next day, he said, "We've never felt like that before." But that's where I am. I like the boys to have a laugh. I like to give, I like them to give each other a bit of shit, uh, give each other a bit of boost. But as long as they don't go overboard, no one, yeah. no one gets upset by it. Um, and, and I just believe in that, and I think. Now you're trying to cut that out, out the sports and stuff like that, and I I think it's I think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Definitely, and 
that's what I'm trying to make enlightened about. Like we're, that we're dead on, on the group. It would like, we're dead nurturing, like proper encouragement. Nothing shocks us. We, 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 you know, we're proper, like good on each other in there. But I want to kind of like provide a space in the future where we can be down the pub. We can have a laugh, but also <clears throat> if someone's down and out, on their last legs that they, they, they can they feel like the license and it's not an inconvenience down the pub or we, we, we actually have a partnership with a, a boxing gym rebels gym here in nottingham right um like and now that i've moved out so i'm going to go in there every week and actually get involved with the sessions and uh, uh, just participate that's it just being there being family like you're saying and having that banter but then because enlightens there and we, we want to sh show men like, look, if you need to talk, I'm here. Like just, just pull me aside and we'll chat like mm. however long and it's that culture where it just becomes ingrained in who we are. I feel like it's like, Oh, if, if it's all oh, mental health, we, we, we can't go there. Cause you know, we're having a laugh and we're down the pub or we're down the gym. And it's like, no, it should just be ingrained in who we are as men. Like if you're feeling crap, you just need to offload and chat. Just yeah. have it. That's yeah. what I'm trying to aim for. Of course. Of course, and uh, unfortunately, yes, certain, certain things just try to be taken away from people and not do this and not do that. And um, you know, you look at school. Uh, and for me, you look at young kids now. And uh, school, for example, teachers aren't allowed to shout. Can't do nothing. Police, police can't do nothing. So when kids actually do get problems, they don't know how to deal with them. You know, you know, we never heard about this 15, 20 years ago. Uh, when it was a bit more structured in school, he, he was scared of the teacher. He was scared. He was scared the teacher was going to phone your father. So he's done something wrong. <laughs> but it, was, it sort of built you. It sort of built you as a man and built you as a woman. Um, now it's like my my boy was naughty in school, and uh, a teacher phoned me and she said, "I do apologise. I raised my voice to him, and I'm I'm, I'm on the phone. And I just couldn't believe what I heard. You yeah. apologise and raise your voice." Oh, my day would be my dad would say, Give him a clip on the back of the head. Mm. He'd mouth in, give him a clip on the back of the head. But now he's just not allowed to do nothing. And I, 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 I just, I just, I don't know. I just think it makes him soft. And when they actually do have a problem, they yeah. can't, can't actually deal with it. Or, or, they, or they're disrespectful. No. It's a lot of kids disrespectful because Man. it was where, where I'm from, not far up, not far up the road, say a couple of miles. There was a riot. There was a, it was a young kid, bit of a drug addict, stuff like that. His, his mates decided to go on a rampage, uh, an absolute rampage as a send off him. Absolutely idiotic. Uh, it was about 200 there. And they were smashing cars, burning cars, right? And the police come down. There's a video. There's a, there's a video. If you scroll down my media, I think I put, the, put on the video. Uh, and they throw in bricks at a police van, right? Now, 10 years ago, that police van would have run him over. Now, that police van drove off. So it went on for hours. And it was three boys, boxers. Uh, Ricky Owen was one. He's an ex-boxer. He's from the area. And two of his mates. They come up the road. And this gang of 200 people shit themselves. And they legged it. Because they knew they were going to get a slap. Because Ricky, Ricky would look after, his, look after his place. So they knew they were going to get a slap. With the police, they knew the police couldn't do nothing. Yeah. So that's why they performed the way they did. Unless they had a dispersal order, which the inspector has to pass. Because we've had it. We've had it. So I, I actually work. Uh, I don't tell anyone on this. I don't think I've ever mentioned it on camera, but I, I work um, as a CPO, community protection officer. Right. I work with the police. Um, and I find this really interesting because you, you'd have to have a, a dispersal order that inspector signs off to them moving along to have permission to basically arrest them if they're misbehaving whereas when i grew up so i'm i'm born in 88 so when i grew up in the 90s like you didn't you didn't speak back to a local bobby you you, you basically were like i'm not gonna mess around and if it came to the police you're like you just don't go there because you were like no. you're in for it um <clears throat> whereas now it's like it's really sad like on, on my area we've built up a, a quality relationship with some of the young people like who are who are in the poorest estate of postcodes in, in the uk actually um and mate literally we, we've been playing football with them in our uniform and and getting to know them and fathering them and like they actually listen to us and we're just cpos like we don't have 
full police powers. Whereas the police, mm. mate, they were egging the police vans and everything the other week. And you're like, I thought when I drove up, because my van looks quite policey, I thought, oh, bro, they're going <laughs> to get, gonna get egged here despite that. But they didn't. They just, I rolled the window. Oh, Rory, how you doing? Mate? I was like, yeah, sound all right. I'll just, you know, try. I was like, you've got to listen to the officers. Like, come on. Like, they're no, mm. they're, they're no worse than me. That you know they're here for your best interest and, and oh, yeah yeah and it's just like yeah man it's it's mad how we've gone so far the other way and they take liberties and they know their rights now a lot of young people so they just do it because they're like what you're gonna do and you're like oh shit <laughs> madness mate man there's no there's no rules there's no structure there's no yeah. um it's no authority yeah and I I do believe them kids kids can cope and. Um, it, it, it like you said, it took them boys, uh, three boys, to disperse 200. Then, then they were going to do another send off the kid up in a place called Bony Mine, where my gym's from. Now, Bony Mine is a, it's a, it's a, it's a rough area, but they all look after the own. Yep. So the boys put a message out: you come up here, you come up here, you won't be leaving. So they decided not to go up. Nothing happened. Uh, and that was just a bit of respect and a bit of authority, e- e- even though uh, that's all the boys done. You come up here, your two hundred boys come up here. You won't be leaving. So they decide, ooh, you know, you stay away. And uh, unfortunately, in this world, there's not a lot of respect anywhere. There's not a lot right. of authority anywhere anymore. Um, that's just bonkers. It is mate. We need to uh, get them taking CBD, don't we, bud? I've seen you on it. Mate, it's brilliant stuff, and you know it's um, it's it's it did help massively with anxiety, uh, massively sleep. But uh, I used it for a, a herniated disc I had, um, and right. I had it for eighteen months. I couldn't walk, uh, I couldn't stand. It was the most painful experience of my life. Uh, I had everything off a doctor, nothing worked. I had a cortisone injection, nothing worked. Andy Fowler phoned me. He said, "Try this." I said, "Oh, a lot of shit. I don't believe it." <laughs> It's hey, then, scouts are on it with you. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get then, John said, God, it's brilliant. He yeah. said, I've had him all lab tested. He said, I said, ah, it's a load of shit. I just want to have none of it. I said, so in the end, I phoned him back. Well, two weeks later, I thought, why not? I said, oh, go on, let me have a go. So he got me on it. Uh, and within about three or four weeks, I started noticing a difference. Um, uh, mad. Just absolutely mad. So I am a big believer in it. That's class, um, mate. Oh, man, I, I was as I was sceptical as they come. Yeah, yeah, full on. Or a pile of shit. <laughs> but when I went through what I went through and the, the actual drugs the doctor put me on and everything else and put it to work the way it did, it was amazing. Yeah, man. That, we've um, done an episode on it with uh, Kyle Field, who knows Anthony. Yeah, well, actually, Kyle. weirdly enough, like, I... I, I Kyle, actually, Kyle's actually, the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen a couple of tweets off in the last couple of days. Yeah, Kyle's top boy. So we've done an episode with Kyle. Um, but yeah, I, I started it just around then and I was on the 500 milligrams and then 3000, I, I take 12,000 now and it's just I'm on 12 as well. Perfect. It's, it's really, just, just need, right. Need, need less, last longer as well. Yeah. Bigger bottle, mate. And you get more for your money. 100%. Plus with the, uh, so it, a picture, Nick, guys watching this right now, usually I just love chatting, but if you're watching this and come on, we got a former world champion boxer saying this stuff works. So if you're struggling with pain, um, lack of sleep, um, anxiety, all these things, it's an anti-inflammatory. This stuff works. Um, Enzo's got a code, his own personal code. We'll put it on the screen. I, I believe it's Enzo30, 30, 30 yeah. in capital. Enzo, Enzo30, give him 30% off. There you go. Um, but no, I, you know, I'm a big believer. I won't put my name. I won't put my name to the others. I got offered. Uh, I got offered a little something that could have been could have made a really good couple of quid off it. And uh, I tried it out for a month. It didn't work for me, so I couldn't put my name to it. They said, oh, just, just say it. I said, I can't. It doesn't work for me. It can work. And that's why I'm a big believer in this uh, CBD oil, because it worked for me. And it's worked for everyone else I've got out to. Yeah. And I always say to people as well, run the course, like, and then up yeah. the dosage. Because I had, a, I had a, this is, you're going to love this story. So my best mate, 27 years now, um, I'm 33, by the way, if you don't think, if you're like, how's that happen? I guess that was an NBA year. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, his uh, son-in-law is uh, 20, 21, uh, plays a bit of football as well. Um, 
mate, he's been diagnosed with arthritis in his spine to the point where he's in excruciating pain, doesn't play football anymore. So I got him on Supreme CBD, gave him um, 3,000 milligrams, one touch in the side, and he's like six foot three. Said to him, right, go for the big daddy. Got, he got him on the 12,000 milligrams, literally. Two days later, he's like, Rory, it's unbelievable. Thank you so much. And then within a week or two, he's already playing football again, using the, uh, the balm as well, muscle rub. Oh, great. Class, isn't it, mate? It is, it is good, sir. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, say, say again. And he's done good. Hey, do you know what? He's about as genuine as it gets. I see him, bro. It, you see on his on his Twitter, he's helping so many people. It's just like, good yeah, on him, man. He taught by you. He taught by his miss. Um, I was you know, he's a he's a, a love you or hate him kind of. Then I, I don't know why because he he, he comes he comes across well. He comes across nice. He comes across as dedicated. He comes across as someone who just wants just wants to achieve his dream. Yeah. Um, you know, last time out, he, he boxed a, a, a top, top class by the yeah, way. Beef, beef, he's uh, yeah, oh, he's brilliant. You know, he, he'd be round, he's be fought everyone, he's uh, he's, he's on a world stage, and it, it was just too big a jump for Anthony. And um, but he got in there, he gave it his best shot, he did mate, uh, he did. He done right for a couple of rounds, beefy, but beefy's experience told in the end, um, he did, didn't it? And I think that fight showed Anthony that he shouldn't be that weight anyway. I think he's cutting too much weight, uh, so that he's gonna he's gonna move up now and all the best. Then. Yeah, hopefully so, mate. Because I I want it for him so bad to be world champion. And one of our boys, Lee Wood, just um, had a shot. Yeah, came in last week. Terrific performance. Unbelievable, mate. Like I I I follow um, Jordan uh, Gill as well because they're both stable mates. Fight, not a good fighter. Yeah, thrill. Um, Jordan and, Gill. Yes, mate. They're good. They're good boys. They are and. I love how they did. They still haven't fought each other, but yeah, I thought respect for Lee coming in last minute because it was Conor Ben who obviously was meant to fight and because he COVID and then you're just like, oh, mate. I was like, oh, it might be just a little bit too much. And then he just boxed just unbelievably and smashed the guy up. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get a fight at the uh, city ground, forest ground, world championship. So. Hey, who's he, he going to fight now? Are we going to fight Conman? Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Big fight. They were going to announce it on on one of the one of the DAZN cards, like. But then, then Hearn said no. So I think he's he's not put that and wants it as a main headline in Nottingham. I think so that'd be sick. But but I think doing that they'd have to wait till the summer. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But mate, you should come by, come Nottingham, come it come might, watch it. Might do. Yeah, let that's, me know. That's a good fight. That is a good fight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, hard to pick a winner, but no, nah, I love it, man. It's class. I love talking, but I could talk boxing all day long. And <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, love it. No, but, um, thank you, mate. It's been class tonight. Um, appreciate it so much. And just before we uh, wrap it up, could you answer Aaron like the Shadow's question? So, um, you know, there could be someone a bit like Will, I guess, and, you know, they're struggling in the four walls of their mind, but they don't know who to talk to. They don't know what to do. And, you know, we, we've said this, we're, we're not mental health professionals. We've got, not got white lab coats, but um, just from your experience, mate, and what you've been through and that, could you give like some small piece of advice for someone who just like basically wants to end it, they don't want to be here anymore? Well, what, what I found, I know this is a bit of a thing, but what I found is change your new diet. Change your new diet, get off the sugars, get off the salt, get off the fizzy drinks, and yeah. make your body feel a lot better. Drink plenty of water. And find someone who can speak to. I know it's hard. I know many things is hard, but it's going to be someone there. I, I'm the same. Never spoke to anyone. I found someone in the last year uh, that I got someone to talk to. Very rarely I will talk to them because I, I'm not. I'm not. I never get that bad. So, but I do get the like, days where I do need a bit of a pep talk and I do think. So always find someone you can trust. Always find someone you can talk to. You'll be surprised how much it help you just getting things off your chest and if. If you can't find someone close to you, find a professional. Because you know you, you speak to you speak to people on Twitter, you speak to people on Facebook or whatever. And, you know they they're not they're trying to help you as much as they can, but they're not professionals. They might give you the wrong thing. So seek help, seek someone to talk to. Overhaul your diet, a healthy body, healthy mind. Come on. Oh, get some training in as well. Bit of exercise, great for the endorphins. There you go, ends. Put a slip that in there. 
Love that. Yeah. No, it's, it's true, mate. Like, the catharsis you get out of working out, like the amount of times I try and pile for the gym. And then afterwards, I'm like, yes, man, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad I went. The hardest part was getting there. It wasn't, it wasn't the workout. Mm. It's getting there, in my mind. So. No, it's not for me. I, I love it. But I had them all. I had them all, man. I'm not allowed to train for a minute. I just got a rush. So I'm not allowed to train. So all I can do is walk. But I am walking. I'm getting out through my walks. Just doing a little something. Well, I'm going to ask you a massive favour. So when we get off, cam off camera, can you do a, 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 a short video clip? Saying Rory get to the gym, you pussy. <laughs> right. Yeah, no problem. At so, so send it to my DMs, and I'll, I'll have to play it every time I'm feeling like, no, man, I can't go to the gym. Oh, no. Make it. Yeah. I do actually finish. Yeah, go go fully in, just fully in, and be like, don't worry. quit the don't excuses. Worry. Get don't worry for that. Go fully in, don't no holds barred, and I'll just be that'll be class, mate. But. Honestly, it's been sick, mate. I mean, we really enjoyed um, hearing your heart and opening up. Massive respect, mate. Um, yeah, and we, I said it to you on DMs. If you, I know you got your mate, but if you ever need an outlet, um, everything stays confidential with us. Stop, That's what we're about. Everything stays safe because I think some men struggle with that. They don't want things to be uh, leaked. But yes, mate. Um, guys, thank you for tuning in. This has been episode 42 with Enzo Macronelli. Had a class time tonight and uh, we hope you enjoy this episode. If you have, click that subscribe button down there and um, just below the video and share this as far and wide as you can because we, we don't know who might be struggling. They might be on Twitter um, and then they see Enzo like open up like this and they go, wow, and then it encourages them to do the same. So yeah, um, if you're not following Enzo, get on it. His Twitter handles come up and then ours is at EnlightenSH1. But thank you guys. We'll uh, see you next time. I appreciate it. Nice one.